Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, earth weather alerts, including some rough conditions coming soon, three top news articles out of the AGU as well, but let's get started with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. Last 24 hours was a calm one. The sunspot group born yesterday flittered around in his little corner, but not developed much. No solar flares, and with the solar wind calming a bit over the last day, geomagnetism is calm at Earth as well. The coronal hole here has no chance of its stream missing Earth, that one due here early in the week. We're also in need of filament monitoring as they've made the last few small CMEs and a large one is incoming on the north. Let's use some shots of yesterday's tornado in Kentucky to shift to the weather where there are lots of things to focus on in just the GO-16 full disk view. Day cloud phase into lightning detection and the best place to begin is with Florence. Now the GFS model has to give one a bit of hope here as staying offshore reduces the worst flood risk. But the Euro model is where disaster strikes. In that model, the hurricane comes on shore, gets stuck, and just sits there for days. That's a disaster waiting to happen. If this track is taken, it could stall out and pour over the region for five straight days. Hawaii, the system is going to run at you the day before. Both models show impact with the other one not shown here with a bit more impact to the Big Island. This is the storm we discussed on our podcast yesterday. With all that's going on around the Americas, it is critical we do not sleep on this one in the West Pacific as it is heading for subduction zones and then a billion people. Last but not least, top alert over the next 24 hours worldwide is a flood risk for my hometown of Pittsburgh and greater western Pennsylvania as even in the cloudy steel city this is going to seem absolutely ridiculous. Top news begins with New Zealand. No secret, the entire nation is geomagnetically vulnerable, and as many have suggested, it's not their systems or their technology, it's simply the ground around them being perfectly set up to take geomagnetic induction from CME impact, scariest space weather country on Earth. Up next, it's not just the CME, but powerful solar flares can directly affect the ionospheric layers and play directly in the global electric circuit. Sadly, these are far more unpredictable in terms of the severity of the event, but this is why the solar flare is a climate player even before its particles arrive. Lastly here, an incredible article I can't believe is published here. So after ocean hiding heat hypothesis didn't work out so well to explain the global warming pause, the notion that cooling anthropogenic aerosols were causing the failure of temperatures to stick with carbon emissions. Turns out we can't blame those cooling aerosols either, leaving mainstream climate science struggling to understand why the pause occurred while solar scientists just shake their heads in disbelief. Gotta hand it to them, it is nothing short of top tier focus and dedication to pretend that star is not sitting up there in the sky. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.